finest director Sham Benegal who unfortunately couldn't join us today though we did expect that he would. A national award winner, she has also acted in television serials and incidentally I have seen her since she was that big when I was do, dabbling in theatre myself. And she has won applause for effectively portraying the young Gohar John on stage. May I invite Rajeshri Sachdev Rajeshri on stage. And now I'm inviting Aruna, the author herself, please come on stage. section from the preface. Uh, actually, Aruna had ordered, asked me to read some other passages, but uh, some of them turned out to be very harrowing to go through and uh, would have been even more so had I uh, had to read them aloud. And they were, they were personal, so I'd rather let you savor them on your own. But I, but I consider this passage rather important. Uh, because it's, it's from the preface and it, it talks about her, herself. Uh, before I, I read, I'd also like to uh, share a few things about Aruna, the two experiences I've had working with her, two films, in both of which uh, she made me do something that uh, I, I never dreamt would ever happen to me in my life. The first was a film called Sitam, uh, in which uh, Aruna and Vikas were directing jointly and they came to me and said, you have to play a footballer. Uh, and you have to practice football for a month. So football I played as a kid and I love it anyway. So I happily uh, practiced the football and then they sprang the surprise when I was well and truly in the movie that I'd have to do five Shambhi Kapoor songs as well. Uh, if they told me this before I said yes, I might not have accepted the film. Because as anyone who's seen Shambhi Kapoor perform a song knows there is no one on earth who can do it like him. So, uh, I in fact went to meet Mr. Shambhi Kapoor to ask him how he did what he did. And he just sort of laughed it off and said, look, I, I, I just loved that music and I, I, I used to listen to it all the time. He said, I had a tape recorder in my car and I'd listen to it traveling from town to a studio wherever I had to go and I would I, would, I just enjoyed it, so just try to enjoy it, try to apply yourself the same way as you applied yourself in a film like Par. And I was astonished to learn he had actually seen Par. But I, I did what I could. Uh, and then the second movie was Rihai, uh, in which uh, I was to be wooed by Hemaji. Which is another thing I thought never happened to me in my life. <laughs> But it actually did, and I may say it was a great pleasure. Uh, it was, in fact, the second time, Himaji, uh, the third time, Himaji and I have appeared together in a movie. One was a film called Nargis, which never got released. Uh, and the third was Rehai. The first one, even she doesn't know about, uh, was a film called Sapno Ka Saudagar, which was her first film, and I was in the crowd. <laughs> 
So Aruna has made me go through two utterly unique experiences in the course of my filmic career. So here's the last bit from the, uh, uh, the preface. For me, it is not possible to separate my life and my personal experiences from the films I make. It doesn't mean that all my films are biographical. I'm interested in life, people, relationships, and sometimes disturbing issues in society. And that's the kind of films I made. However, I chose to make middle cinema or middle of the road cinema as I wanted an audience for my films. I've also seen how I felt alienated from my own self when I made a film to meet the demands of the producer or the market and diluted it into a degree that robbed it of its soul. Such compromises don't work for me. And I decided long ago that I would rather not make a film if there is no artistic freedom. That explains why I made fewer films than I could have. The other reason was that I was working in a male-dominated sexist industry and did not want to compromise myself as a woman. The lack of artistic freedom is also probably why most of the directors from FTII found it hard to create their films in the commercial atmosphere of Bollywood. Uh, there were other reasons too, but she hasn't talked about them. Uh, 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 though the technicians from FTI got absorbed into the industry, even before they had received their diplomas, there were only a handful of directors who found their feet in Bollywood. Stories can be told in various ways, and it is not the plot or even characters, but how a writer or director views it that is central. It's also a very interesting fact, which is not in this book, that uh, the number of Film Institute graduates in Mumbai actually making movies today, uh, a very small percentage is from the direction course. They are either editors or some uh, engineers or cameramen or even actors who have turned to filmmaking, not the direction students. After my first feature film, no, as a, as a woman filmmaker, I found myself going against the trend in the male-dominated industry against the backdrop of where young women found themselves in the 60s and 70s, facing whatever was available in India for them as a future, which wasn't very much. So my struggles have been both professional and personal. After my first feature film, Shak, was released, Sai Paranjpe, who had been doing theatre and TV, released her first film, Sparsh. Then there was Aparna Sen, who did her first feature film, 36 Chorangile, in 1981. And still, for years, there were just a handful of us. And we held our ground for over so many years and made films that we were proud of. Aparna continues to do that and I admire her immensely. I have been teaching uh, since the 1970s and most of my girl students veered away from features, preferring to work on ads, documentaries and television, simply because of the way the industry operated in those days. And also because it was likely to be a long haul. Today there are women directors in every kind of film and that for me is satisfying. Thankfully it's not just women filmmakers but girls from almost all strata of society who have become vocal and in carving out their own space in an unequal society. In spite of heavy commercial demands and catering to the lowest common denominators, some actors not just survived but honed their craft over time. Then there were composers, singers and musicians who kept the spirit and art alive. Asha Bosley, for one, is someone who again I admire for taking life by the horns and continuing to survive with great gusto all kinds of challenges, never letting it affect her singing, never giving up. For me, the journey has been not just fascinating, but one that is really rich with insights about people's behaviour. The change in values over the years and the hypocrisy of the make-believe world of films. I wonder sometimes whether people here in the film world, creative, crazy, hungry for fame and name or unlimited wealth, are living in the real world or acting out their real life characters like in a movie. The tragedy is that their struggles were real, as were their agonies and ecstasies, as many had to compromise on their art, their self-esteem or their personal life in the face of business and box office interests. And I learned compassion as I watched their struggles over the last so many years. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Looking back, I have been fortunate to have had access to a range of people from the film industry, from the stars to the spot boys 
and from the highly creative and intellectual to the pseudos and vendors of flesh. In the end, everyone wanted a piece of the cake, but no matter how much they got, it was never enough. My journey has been a long one, also a very eventful one. There has been no dull moment in my life. My parents gave me the immense wealth of education and independent thought, and I was fortunate also to have access to a world of transformation through the landmark forum and through the teachings of Werner Erhard. Whether faced with success or failure, I could remain grounded and work to better myself and make a difference in the world through my conversations, lectures, workshops, or my films which gave me an unimaginable power to communicate my thoughts and feelings to the world, sometimes to question, sometimes to provoke, sometimes to guide, and sometimes simply to share. had the good fortune of working with her, but today it is my good fortune to read from her autobiography and um, I asked her what I should read. So she suggested this piece, which also interests me, which is from another world, the past life regression. Also what I really like about it concludes into her, the present and uh, it is her opinion on a problem that plagues us all today. My determination to evolve and find meaning and purpose in my life and my suffering led me to try all kinds of meditation techniques, but I was never faithful to any one method. I even attended Vipassana classes at Igatpuri near Nashik for 10 days. It was quite demanding and rigorous, but I stuck through it. At that time, what showed up on my radar was past life. I had read a lot of books by Dr. Brian Bayes and Dr. Goldberg and was curious to know about my own life, trying to find some answers. The Ranga used to conduct past life regression sessions for people to access their past lives which helped them deal with their present life traumas and bring closure to issues that were incomplete in their lives. He suggested that I attend one. We arranged a session in a small hotel in Nagurthane that he owned with some friends. There were many things that I had an affinity towards, many things I abhorred, and I'm, I had no idea where it all came from since there was no direct associations in the present life. My attachment to Paris or my extreme anger at men who molested, raped or ill-treated women had no reference in the present life. The past life session untangled all that. Initially, there were fleeting images of me in France, maybe in Paris, dancing at a ball and being wooed by admirers. Then there was another bit in which I was a soldier in a trench, fighting a war somewhere in Europe. Then I came upon something which was like a film I was watching. After almost 25 years or more, it is still so clear. Ranga attributed my capacity for strong visualization to the fact that I was a filmmaker. The setting was again somewhere in France on a farm. I was a chubby child of five and a woman who looked like a maid was bathing me in a round wooden tub. The water was very hot and steam was coming off my chubby pink body. She got me out of the tub and wrapped me in a towel, patting me dry, then she put me on the bed so she could dress me. At that time, my stepfather walked in. He was a heavy, burly man, rough and unshaven, and when he came and sat on the bed next to me, he sent the woman out on an errand and started to touch me. He touched my face and lips and all the way down my body to my private parts. I started squirming because I hated his touch. I kept pushing his hand away. The woman came back and the spell was broken. Ranga asked me what was happening and I replied that I had hated the unwanted, unwelcome touch of that man. In the next scene, I found myself in a barn where there were animals. I don't know how I got there. 
The monstrous stepfather was on top of me in a pile of hay, groping me and trying to pull my panties down. He smelled foul and I wanted to throw up. During the session, I even raised myself from the bed where I was lying as waves of nausea swept, swept over me. Ranga again asked me what was happening and I kept describing things as we went along. Somehow I managed to push my stepfather away and ran out of the barn. I kept running, not knowing where I was going, just to escape from him. I went up a steep slope on the top of a hillock. I was out of breath and before I knew what was happening, he had caught up with me. He dropped me to the ground, pulled my panties down and raped me from the back as I had fallen on my face. My screams did not have any effect on that monster. I was completely knocked out and felt like a dead rag, limp and lifeless. But there was more to come. As he finished his job, he pushed me over the cliff. I realized that I was falling. I was terrified and there was nothing to grab at. I flailed my arms and legs and being Finally, what seemed forever, I hit the ground. All was still. I wondered if I was dead and opened my eyes. All around was just white snow. I tried to move and realized I was actually dead. My back was broken and that was it. I once again described to my guide what had happened. I was shivering by now and had to be covered with a shawl. My guide slowly brought me back to the present. I felt so horrible having been part of such a dastardly thing. I wished I had not done the past life regression. My friend asked me to just be and sleep it off, which I did involuntarily since I was so exhausted. The next morning I felt no better. By afternoon my guide said it would be a good idea to take me back and complete whatever was incomplete. I had no choice but to go back given what I was feeling. What I saw now were bits and pieces of scenes and not a continuous narrative unfolding like before. Apparently, my stepfather had abused and raped other little girls in the village too and he was now being tried in some court of law. One day when the maid brought the news that the man had been punished, I asked, did they hang him? She replied in the affirmative and added that she and my past life brother had attended the hanging as it was a public one. I felt better now that the perpetrator had been punished for what he had done. When we sat down to analyze and look at what I had gleaned from the past life regression, some things were very clear. My attachment to Paris and France was the most obvious one. The second thing was my anger and almost militant stand against abusers and rapists. It made complete sense to me because in my present life I had not allowed myself to be molested or abused or even taken advantage of. And I had never seen such incidents at my mother's home or even in the marital home. The third thing was my chronic back problem for years. It was no wonder that I had carried it into my present life. Given what is happening in the country today with regard to abuse of women, I want the highest form of punishment for the perpetrators. I feel incarceration or death is a very easy way. The culprits should be allowed to live without the use of that very tool they use to violate women. It would perhaps be a more stringent punishment for them to live as castrated males. Of course, if they have killed the victim, I guess a death sentence or a life sentence could be in order, though personally I don't like the death penalty. A lot of people might think that I am too harsh, but anyone, male or female, who has dealt with rape in any life, past or present, would know why I feel so strongly about it. This was just another winning one of my life's experiences. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about you know, when I made Rehai, how it was for me, and Himaji was there and the I mean, you know, and you know, my, ma my divorce was going on, my marriage had fallen apart, and uh, you know, I had to somehow stand up, stand for myself and do something with my life, and that's how I made Rehai. And all of them were so cooperative, Ila's there, she played a remarkable role in that, and many others, most of them are here, many of them are here. 
and they all worked so well with me, worked for peanuts and stood by me, stood for me and uh, one person I remember amongst all of them is also I'd like to say a few words about Vinod Khanna. He was a um, very good friend. He really helped me when I needed help. I didn't have money for the first print of Rihai and he gave me just money just like that and said, and I said, but I don't know when and how and whatever. He said, payable when able. And thankfully I could pay that money back. But they all went out of their way to help me and uh, I do want to acknowledge Vinod there's a very good human being who, you know, and everybody, there's not much we can talk about him, everybody knows. But one thing I will say, thank you Vinod for everything and uh, we miss you. Now to come to the part that I want to read, I, you know, we went to a godforsaken village, we did, now of course it's Varnagar. And it was Varnagar then, but it turns out to be it was Mr. Modi's village, so it got known. But otherwise, it was a godforsaken village then, some 30 years ago. This was 30 years back. Anyway, I completed the film, but my ordeal was not yet over. The film I was making did not obviously fit into the typical Hindi film mold. Vinod Khanna, though, was playing a Rajasthani carpenter, wore a dhoti and sported a moustache. My overseas distributor literally hounded me to show Vinod Khanna wearing trousers at least in one scene. <laughs> in fact, he wanted me to shoot a dream sequence where we know that Hema wore urban modern clothes and sang a song. I was stubborn and did not give in. Such a compromise was beyond comprehension. After the film was released, there were so many women who loved the way Vinod looked. They found him sexy in that get-up and drooled over him. In fact, even his wife Kavita, we fell in love when she used to go, really, that was how it was then. The problem with the film was that people did not know how to categorize it. For the commercial industry, it was an art film, and for the art film crowd, it was a commercial film. An art film in those days was recognized by the commercial film industry as one if it had certain values. When parallel cinema came into existence in the 70s, some excellent films had been made, but by the late 80s, it too had developed a formula of its own. What characterized those films were elements Thank you very much, Mr. Shah, Karunanga Sen, and Rajeshwari. Uh, I think we can go to the next step of the evening. When someone has had a long journey and an eventful journey like Aruna has, there have been many colleagues, collaborators, friends, some of your memories. when she came to me to sign Rihai. I was, those days I was working in many of my, uh, I have done with a lot of commercial films and I was married and I had both my daughters. And that's the time she came with this offer and I was very keen to do a different kind of film. And first of all I wanted to experience how is it to work under a women director because I have always worked with mostly it is with a male director like Ramesh Ji and so many others who wanted to know how it is and plus it, it will be shot in some village somewhere in Gujarat and uh, first thing I asked is hotel hotel hai kya? 
होटल नहीं है वहाँ किसी के घर में रहना पड़ेगा तो वी हैव टू शेयर सम हाउस देन आई हैव टेकन बोथ माई डॉटर्स सो इट वॉज अ रियली अ लवली एक्सपीरियंस स्टेइंग इन सम डीज हाउस शेयरिंग वन रूम विथ माई किड्स एंड नर्स एंड ऑल सिस्टर्स हैव कम टू टेक केयर ऑफ माई चिल्ड्रन and i saw the way you know it's not the regular shooting very very different everyone is ready in the on the set with the costume um, very simple and kursi usi milega baithne ko nahi kursi bhi nahi and really there was no chairs and most of us used to sit on the ground floor mein baitha hai aise actor log aise idhar hi baithe hain मेरे लिए कुर्सी लेके रहो तो वेर एवर आई स्टे बिकॉज आई वॉज फाइंडिंग इट वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू सिट एनी वेयर लाइक दैट सो आई एम वेरी सॉरी अरुणा जी आई एम शेयरिंग दैट टूडे एंड एट दिस टाइम वी डिड लॉट ऑफ सीन्स एंड इट वॉज रियली ब्यूटिफुल आई केप्ट ऑन वॉचिंग हर हाउस इज डायरेक्टिंग विनोद जी को कैसे डायरेक्ट कर रहे हैं नसरत जी नसरुद्दीन शाह जी को कैसे डायरेक्ट कर रही हैं बी ह्यूमन हाउ शी इज एबल टू कम्युनिकेट कैसे एक्सप्लेन करेगी कैसे करेगी ये सब इसलिए देखा क्योंकि बाद में मुझे भी डायरेक्ट बनने का एक शॉर्ट पैदा हैविंग वर्क इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कैमरा आई वॉन्ट टू बी बिहाइंड द कैमरा एंड सी हाउ इज इट हाउ इज इट टू डायरेक्ट अदर्स एंड इट इज रियली अ वंडरफुल एक्सपीरियंस इट वॉज डायरेक्टिंग मूवी but i will call her aruna ji as my guru ji because i want to ask her na abhi direction ke liye to haan bol diya hai lekin main kaise karunga kaise shot lena hai i don't know then she also said and the one that meant uh, gulzar ji also ki nothing you go and go to the set automatically the scenes will direct you how to take the shot <laughs> and i said no no still you tell me kaha camera kaisa rakhna hai kya bata do so she told me she draw a few things and showed me you remember yes <laughs> so that is i have kept it still with me so with that <laughs> i started my serial nupur on dance on classical bharatanatyam nupur banaya thi that did very well uh, and then i had the guts to make uh, dil ashna also i would have continued to make many more films as a director <laughs> but unfortunately the films i was not able to sell it because we are artists we are all very artistically involved in the film but finance part of it we we don't look at that at all so somewhere misfired so little you know not so much keen to do further unless somebody else comes and ask me to direct i'm ready <laughs> so rehai was a very wonderful film at that time for me to work um, in fact dalam ji also said kya picture mein tumne kiya hai bahut baatein ho rahi hai uske bare mein you know see nahi nahi what nice film nahi kya role hai tumhara nahi bahut acha sa role hai bahut badhiya kaam kiya na she is very wonderful director she has done it so well साल अब देखिए ये नहीं बोला बट आई एम श्योर यू हैव सीन बट इट्स सच अ लवली फिल्म एंड स्टिल लाइफ इट इज वन ऑफ माय बेस्ट फिल्म आई से सो ब्यूटिफुली डायरेक्टेड बाय है एंड दिस बुक इज गोइंग टू बी गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी हॉट आई एम श्योर lot of information lot of your experience you have given in this book which will be very very useful to many of the young artists and upcoming directors who wants to come as women also so many people will experience this book is and it is very necessary for people like aruna ji and all to come out and write their own experiences it is necessary to know how hardship it is how much she has gone through uh, in various fields you know right from the beginning the, just now that she read the book it was so nice to know so many things and uh, after rehai i don't know why 
she has not made many more films. I'm still waiting. <laughs> so we you should think. We are so talented. So I pray to God that uh, you continue to make this kind of movies, many different ones. Today's time, we need a director like you. So I pray to God and God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you, Himachi. That was a lovely, lovely speech from the heart. We have another creative giant among us and I'm going to invite him to come on stage. He's someone who has created cinematic history with his movies. Everyone knows Shole, and we have the director of Shole, Sita or Gita, Shan and Sagar. The director of one of the most unforgettable television serials, Buniyad. I invite Amir Sipiji to please come and share his work. Listening to all these people, I had actually requested uh, Arunaji that I speak last. Not because I wanted to be have the last word, please. That was not the reason. Because I have been the least close to her amongst all of you here. So I thought while you guys speak, I will pick up some refrains and be able to say something better. Um, I actually have come to know Aruna very recently only. Closely, I mean. I mean, we've met over the years and uh, always uh, to do with films, of course. I'm very happy to be here that uh, now that her book, Freedom, My Story, is out and uh, even the book I shall read I'll probably start tonight because already from the passages I've heard Nasir Saab and uh, Aruna herself and uh, she's ah there she is yes uh, all, uh, all those passages very, very lovely. And I know uh, it's very difficult for a man to understand how difficult it is for a woman to deal with the world, and especially in films. It has never been easy. Things are changing, but even now if we see the figures, compare them to a number of uh, real makers and real uh, people working in the important positions, except you can't have anybody but a woman playing the leading lady. So <laughs> that's their natural place, but they can be everywhere. They are beginning to be, but it will still take time. But the change is definitely happening, which is the good thing. And the films of the last few years also say, as I think in all the 50 years my experience in cinema, I have seen changes happening, very slow, very gradual, but today we have reached that point where uh, the recognition is uh, quite, uh, quite strong and I think except for the fact that the business end of things is still not as confident uh, with women directors, the business community. Uh, actually, I don't see any reason why women should not be making more films. They are in the West. It's tough, tough there as well. But Aruna has shown from her life so wonderfully that she fights. She fights 
she fights with her life she fights in her personal life she fights to do her work with dignity and tell her stories the way she wants to tell them and she does have this very wonderful balance of making something which is uh, viewable by a much larger audience than uh, films of this uh, uh, genre. I think it's not easy to make very good. I will not call them parallel or art cinema at all. I think there are good films and there are not so good films. Even in uh, so whatever whichever words we want to use for it. Good cinema is good cinema. If you want to create it today, a film like Dangal has run. There's no romance, there's no music. So it breaks all commercial uh, kind of barriers and does the biggest business until Amhavali comes along. And that's history. But so Aruna and her kind of films are what real cinema should be about. Everything else is important. Have, everything will have its importance. But Aruna, whatever you've been doing, please keep doing. And I hope and pray we will continue to always see your good work. And uh, pretty soon after reading your book, I shall say something more. Thank you so much. I must also share this wonderful thought that came to me when I was watching both of you on stage that both of them are HarperCollins authors. We've got them signed on. And I'm hoping Mr. Shah will get you, we can tempt you to do something else for us besides your wonderful biography which I enjoyed reading. It's time for the launch for the moment we've all been waiting for. Arunaji, will you come on stage? Rajeshwari, please come on stage. Mr. Rajeshwari, please come on stage. inevitable photo op. <laughs> I, I always worry about packing. As if it never has to be opened. <laughs> yes. There's a prize for the one who opens it first. <laughs> questions. Um, so please address your remarks and your questions to her. And I will take my leave from you. Yeah. Anyone has any questions? Thank you.